All right, I hope everybody had a good Sunday. Uh, obviously, a great night for us last night. Um, uh, offensively, our players of the game were uh, Spencer Rattler, Jaheim Bell, and Juice Wells. Um, our offensive scout team player of the week was John Darius Morgan. Defensively, Tonka Hemingway was our player of the game, along with Cam Smith, Darius Rush, and Marcellus Dial. Uh, our game plan last night was to leave our defensive backs on an, an island all by themselves, and they did a masterful job of uh, of uh, keeping Tennessee's wide receivers in check. They caught some balls, which we knew they would, but we always tackled and we prevented explosive passes, and we didn't get the ball uh, thrown over our heads like Tennessee does to everybody they play uh, until the very end of the game, and that was on a busted coverage. Felix Hickson was our defensive scout team player of the week, and then our players of the week on special teams were Josh Vam, Debo Williams, and Hunter Rogers. Uh, Joseph Morris was the scout team player of the week. I uh, really liked the way we played in all three phases. Offensively, we obviously got off to a great start. We didn't turn the ball over. Uh, we won our one-on-ones all across the board all night long. Uh, Tennessee cut it to a four-point game, 35-31, to 31, and we literally scored every single time we touched the ball after that. Uh, so heck of a response by our players when when uh, uh, Tennessee made it a four-point game the, early in the second half. We were great on third down. We were great on time of, pos- time of possession, played really well defensively. You know, we tackled well, like I said. And then when, uh, when, they, took, when they took shots down the field, um, we, we won them. I think if you look at the deep shots that they took, we, they were one for nine when we were in man-to-man situations, and we didn't allow them to run past us. So great job from that standpoint. And special teams was uh, Tennessee was not going to kick the ball to our returners. I mean, they were going to uh, kick what we call exotic kicks, kind of all over the place, and keep it short and not not let them get our not let us get our return game going. Uh, so that's a uh, you know great for us because they ended up kicking a couple out of bounds and helped us with the field position. Um, you know, our one punt was a 46-yarder, so did a good job of flipping field position and and uh, and whatnot. So overall, a lot of good, obviously, from last night. A lot of uh, uh, things for us to correct and, and clean up. But for us to be down our, you know, two of our top running backs, to lose Nick eamon Worry early in the game, uh, just really proud of our team and their response. So injury-wise, everybody's good coming out of last night. And Marshawn Lloyd and CBS are both questionable this week. Questions? Hey, Shane, it's Dave. Uh, you mentioned, you know, putting the DBs on an eye last night against the pass heavy offense. At least from the film, it looks like Clemson will probably try to run the ball. What would be the strategy with those DBs if that comes to pass? Uh, you mean to give away the game plan on Sunday night now? Or just uh, some, some general gist? <laughs> I know. I'm just messing with you, David. Um you know, we'll see. It's still early in the week. I mean, every week we want to stop the run, and that's no matter who we're playing. It always starts with stopping the run. And our 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 strategy, our game plan last night was to leave our defensive backs on an island and try and stop the run with with uh, the, the the core guys in the box. And for the most part, we did that. They hit you know a couple of explosive runs early in the game on us uh, because of either a missed tackle or or a misfit and a gap. Clemson certainly ran the ball on us last year, uh, right, right, right through us, and we've got to be a whole lot better at stopping the run, and, and we got to mix it up too, coverage-wise. I mean, we just can't say take our DBs and go lock down receivers. I mean, we got to mix them, mix it up, and and we did a, did did that last night too with pressures and disguises and things like that, and, and this week will be no different. <clears throat> Shane, obviously the. It's been obviously the SEC is going to eventually probably shift its schedule around a little bit. I guess this game could either stay at the end of the season, front end of the, could move to the front end. I guess do you have any kind of preference on that or any thoughts on that or when this game actually gets played, uh, given in, in maybe a new structured schedule that may be coming down the pipe? Yeah, I haven't even thought about that. Um, I mean, to me, it's this is like my favorite weekend of the year in college football, all the rivalry games, and it, what it's what makes college football. Special. Um, I've been a part of games where you play this rivalry game, not at the end of the season, whether it be Oklahoma, and we always play Texas in October around the State Fair, or Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. That wasn't always the last weekend of the regular season, 
my senior year in college. When I was at Virginia Tech, we played Virginia in September, uh, which was a little bit of a strange thing, but that's when we were in the Big East and they were in the ACC. So I've been a part of both of it. Um, you know, I'm somewhat, somewhat of a traditionalist, but, you know, wherever, whenever and wherever they tell us to, to play teams, we'll be there. Uh, ben Brenner, I wanted to ask, in terms of Spencer, was that maybe his best game in terms of taking what was there, not forcing stuff, and sort of letting you know plays kind of come to him? And I guess also in that vein, was that maybe your guy's best uh, pass protection game, allowing in that time, allowing the routes to sort of develop more? Yeah, uh, first part, or the first of all, the offensive line was great last night. Um, them, we're using Nate Atkins in a pass protection role a little bit more. Those guys were awesome because Tennessee's defensive line is extremely, extremely disruptive. And uh, number six for them, Young, is as good a pass rusher as there is in the as there is in this league. So really proud of our guys and the way they played. And Spencer did a great job. I thought he did two th- two things. Well, he did a lot really well. But two, he gave our receivers opportunities when they were one on one with defensive backs to go up and make a play. And we. When you talk about 50-50 balls in the air, we dominated last night. Our receivers did. And then the other thing Spencer did a great job of is when something was when something was uh, there, he took it. And and not meaning you know access off coverage, whatever it might be, he just uh, he got through things quickly and and uh, got the ball where it needed to go very uh, definitively and and with confidence. Hey, Shane, it's uh, Phil Cornblue. Um, I don't know if you've checked your social media stuff today, but there are people out there um, uh, claiming that uh, Coach Satterfield was not calling the plays last night. Can you address that? Uh, he called every single play last night, and that's what kills me, Phil, is were these so-called people, were, were they on the headphones last night? I mean, no disrespect, but anybody that watch the game. I mean, the guy's on the sideline. You can, all you got to do is watch the game and see that he's calling the play. So that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Um, he put the game plan together along with the rest of the offensive staff, and he called every single play last night. I think there was one instance last night where I told him to uh, take a shot and, and throw the ball downfield. And, and other than that, he did everything last night and did a great job of it. Hey, Shane, it's Alan. We heard on the broadcast last night that you guys were using wristbands on defense kind of to try to get plays in quick and slow down their tempo. Maybe it's a better question for Clayton, but how did that kind of come together? Is that something you see continuing to do for Clemson in a bowl game? Uh, possibly. It was something we did last night just because of their tempo, and you're always worried about teams stealing your signals um, and not saying, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of teams that, that do that. And so, one, it helps from that standpoint. The primary reason for doing it last night was just because of the tempo of their offense. You know, we wanted to be able to just uh, – we used signals at times, but we also – the calls that we were going to be calling a lot, um, we just – we wanted to be able to just have it on a wristband so our guys could just all be on the same page and get lined up quicker. So worked fine. I mean, we're not – it's not – you know, like some something on the cutting edge. I mean, we were using wristbands when I was at Virginia Tech 10 years ago, so we used them at Oklahoma. Our defense did, and a lot of teams do. Thought it went well for us last night, and we'll see how it goes. You know, we'll, we'll always uh, be cognizant of uh, of uh, how we get our defensive calls in and offense. Hey, Nate. I mean, um, hey, Shane, it's Mike Yuba. When you've seen Nate Atkins this year, just the growth, I mean, to me, it just seems like he's that old-school, traditional tight end, but he also can do some things, as we saw last night in the receiving game. How has he allowed the offense to grow over the, the course of the season, but especially his impact when it comes to blocking? Yeah, he's a fantastic football player, and he does so much for this team, so much for this offense. He's tough. He's dependable, works his butt off. Um, you know, he's uh, he's really dominant as a tight end. Uh, when blocking, you can see that last night with some of the things he did in the run game. He's really smart and does a great job from a pass protection standpoint. Uh, also being able to do that has really uh, settled things down a little bit with our pass protection, uh, uh, with his physicality in there. And then he's a good route runner. He's got great hands. He can get open. Nice to see him last night, you know, have some catches. We were trying to throw him the ball on the touchdown pass to Jaheim where Spencer scrambled 
we were trying to get the ball to Nate in the flat, and they did a good job covering it. Um, so no, he's he's he gets better every week, and he's been a valuable part of our offense. Shana, and, and, he's fan, and he's fantastic on special teams, Mike. Also, go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. Uh, no, my, my fault. Uh, you know, Shane, you mentioned special teams, how good they've been for you this year. Last night, you didn't really have to rely on them with trick plays or big plays. But in your history with USC Clemson robbery, 07-10, do you remember a few times where special teams showed up and made big plays on either side? Um, Yeah, I remember 2000, what would that have been, nine when we played them in Clemson and all the talk was you can't kick the ball deep to C.J. Spiller, Jacoby Ford, and Andre Ellington and – we kicked it deep. We were all sides. I let the players talk me into re-kicking it, and they ran it back for a touchdown. So I certainly remember that one. Um, um, and and I remember, um, uh, I think, when 2008, we played up there in the rain, and uh, they blocked a punt, I think. we were They were rushing like four guys, and we turned a guy free, and they blocked a punt. Uh, I remember that one, but certainly there's some good ones also. I can remember we played up there my last year at Carolina, 2010, and and we did we had a really good night on special teams. And a big play in that game was they were uh, you know in minus territory, and their snappers snapped the ball over their punter's head. We were trying to put some pressure on them with some of the things we were doing from an alignment standpoint, and made the snapper hold on to the ball a little bit longer than he wanted to. So. Um, you know, there've been some good plays in in that in this series, special teams wise, over the years. Um, you know, I know I've watched a little bit of them on television this year and seen that they do a really good job and they've got weapons in the return game. Uh, and we'll have to really play well in all three phases, but certainly going to need to make something happen on special teams without a doubt. Shane, it's hey, coach. Uh, just on DK. I mean, obviously he kind of was able to mix in and, and give you guys kind of a nice different look offensively and some tempo things here and there last night. I guess what what have you kind of seen from him? And I guess obviously I think he's got one more year of eligibility. Have you had that conversation with him about maybe coming back and what he could bring if he does and, and sort of what he's meant to the program over the last two years uh, what, since you've been here? Yeah, he's such a team guy. He's such a great young man. I uh, love everything that he stands for and everything he's about going in off the field. Um, I think you're seeing him um, continue to – have more of a role uh, in, each, in each and every game. I think he, he's, he probably wasn't 100% healthy early in the season, and I don't think he was running as well as he's running right now. He's getting more and more confident and more and more healthy each week. He's a really talented quarterback. He's a really talented uh, receiver. He can just very much like Nate Atkins and can do so much for our offense. DK can do so much for our offense. And we have not had those conversations. I'll obviously sit down with a lot of guys on our team next week as well. And there were certainly a handful of guys that took part in the senior ceremony last night that could come back if they want to. And uh, I'm hopeful and optimistic that a lot of them will. Hey, Coach, it's Andrew. It seems like that Jaheim Bell, he had a really good night last night running the football. And it seems like that y'all used a lot more power runs um, in y'all's game plan. What has been sort of um, – how has it been trying to have a balancing act regarding adding more things to Jaheim Bell's plate since he moved from the tight end position to the running back position in Marshawn Lloyd's absence for the last couple of weeks? What are you referring to as power run? Downhill runs, or what are we talking about? More, more, more downhill runs with more pulling blockers going to one side of the formation. Um, we did a little bit last night more of um, you know, the formations where we had – uh, a tight end on one side by himself, and then three receivers on the other side. We we did a little bit more of that, kind of an RPO type thing for us. Uh, but other than that, a lot of the same things we did last night were we did a little bit more of the power read with DK at quarterback um, as well. And then we did a lot, basically the same stuff we've always done: ran the counter and and ran you know the zone play or duo, what people however one of people want to call it, but. Certainly, I think you always want to do what fits your player's skill set the best. Um, you know, we don't do a ton in the run game, but you certainly got to mix it up and keep teams off balance. And and James a really good football player, and he's good when he's on the perimeter, out in space, as you saw last night. And and he's a good tough runner too that can also get downhill and and uh, and break tackles and uh, break tackles as well. Hey Shane, I wanted to ask about. 
uh, wanted to ask about Darius Rush. Obviously, you know, he comes here, comes to South Carolina as a wide receiver, um, kind of a developmental guy his first three years. Then you guys get your hands on him. Where was he as a defensive back when you guys as a staff came in, and what's it been like to kind of watch his growth from then through last year and through this year? Yeah, I'd say he's very uh, – he was very raw, if you will, um, to that position when we first got here. But he's a guy that has gotten really, really better or really, really good, has gotten better, and he's really gained in, in confidence as well. He's a leader on this football team and really proud of his development and the way he's playing for us right now. He did a great job last night and played with great poise and, and great confidence. Hey, Shane, it's Hale. I just want to ask a recruiting-related question, and obviously you've, you've talked about how important environments are. For, from that standpoint, uh, anything you can share uh, coming out of last night and the guys who were there and the storm in the field and, and just sort of all that, that stuff? Yeah. It was about as good as it gets as a, from a recruiting standpoint. One, with the prospects that were here. Two, the way we played. And then three, the atmosphere and the celebration at the end of the game. I mean, it was awesome. I told you in the press conference there were a bunch of smiling faces in that locker room afterwards. Um, and, you know, I'm still going through text messages on my phone from recruits. It'll probably be <laughs> the end of the week before I'm able to get to them all. But they were all texting me after the game. And very much like the, uh, I think it was the A&M game I told you. I mean, I had a couple of them FaceTime me last night at like 1.30 in the morning just wanting to talk and to be and that were excited. And then, and then I was back in the office this morning and met with one at 8.30 this morning and, and had about six recruits in my office throughout the day as well. And it was nothing but positive. So I want to certainly thank our fan base for the – atmosphere they created last night that was uh that was unbelievable so thank you all i'll see you tuesday take care